In our post-dystopian cyberpunk world, glyphosate isn't merely a molecule, but rather the character in a saga of blurred science, tailored narratives, and systemic manipulation. Its omnipresence in our food, the remnants that linger in our bodies, our soil, and our water serves as a stark symbol of the hidden toll of our unchecked march of civilizing missions. Silent, invisible, its presence is pervasive. It is more than just an agrochemical product. It embodies the corporate stranglehold on the fabric of our world, where multinational titans like Bayer wield immense power. If you're not using Roundup, that perennial weed you thought was dead could come back again and again. The narrative surrounding glyphosate safety isn't guided solely by science, but also by the unyielding pulse of commerce. Our understanding, our ability to question, even our fears, are manipulated by this potent force of neoliberal subjectivity, spread by hive-mind idioms, and enforced by the discipline of psychology, which normalizes a sell-out prostitution culture of neoliberal subjectivity, and calls it progress. The mechanisms we rely on for safety assurances are not immune to these influences. Glyphosate safety studies, bundled and presented neatly, come from the very entities that produce it. The story of glyphosate is etched across our food landscape. It is found in our cereals and snacks, our wheat and oats, our legumes, fruits and vegetables. It resonates in the quiet murmurs of bees, breaches the hallowed domain of the organic, and even infiltrates our flesh and bone. Nothing appears to be out of its reach, not our field crops, fruits or vegetables, not our coffee or tea, cotton, honey, tobacco, cocoa, spices, or herbs. Our animal products and even our organic food are not spared due to the risk of cross-contamination. Glyphosate can contaminate organic fields through drift from neighboring conventional fields, seepage into irrigation water, or from prior application in the same soil. It can also infiltrate water sources via agricultural runoff, posing a potential threat to both crop irrigation and drinking water. Even organically raised animals may be exposed to glyphosate through contaminated water or indirectly via feed. Wild fruits, vegetables, and herbs are not immune as they can be exposed through spray drift from nearby agricultural fields or tainted water sources. Glyphosate residues can persist in soil and compost for various lengths of time depending on conditions, potentially impacting subsequent crops. Dr. Stephanie Seneff, a senior research scientist at MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory has devoted considerable time to studying the potential impacts of nutritional deficiencies and environmental toxins on human health. A significant portion of her work focuses on the possible health repercussions of glyphosate exposure. She has proposed that glyphosate might play a role in a range of health problems such as gut dysbiosis, autism, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, heart disease, and liver disease. Dr. Seneff's work has sparked substantial debate within the scientific community, partly fueled by the intricate connections between science, economics, and politics in our neoliberal society. The neoliberal university often aligns with the dominant paradigm, a paradigm influenced to a great extent by powerful multinational corporations and has seeped into our sociality. Entities like Bayer, formerly Monsanto, are key manufacturers of glyphosate and have grown tremendously under neoliberalism. This growth has equipped them with considerable political and economic influence, allowing them to shape regulatory frameworks, direct the course of research, and mold public perceptions of their products, including glyphosate. Safety studies and trials of glyphosate are predominantly conducted or commissioned by these very corporations that produce the herbicide. In a landscape shaped by these neoliberal forces, research that aligns with commercial interests tends to be prioritized. Consequently, studies revealing potential negative impacts of products like glyphosate might face hurdles in obtaining funding. In this complex milieu, the work of scientists like Dr. Seneff, who challenged the safety narrative of widely used products such as glyphosate, takes on even greater significance. In our cyberpunk reality, we're all players. The choices we make, the truths we seek, they shape the world of tomorrow. The glyphosate narrative is but one thread in the fabric of our existence, but it's a thread that weaves a revealing pattern. This has been another exploration into the heart of our cyberpunk world. 
Only by recognizing our cyberpunk dystopia as it truly is, may we attempt to even imagine a possible solar punk.